tell us about your background in mindfulness. My, my training in mindfulness in 2019, um, actually started 2018 and I finished 2020. And um, I went into a mindfulness training to become a mindfulness teacher because in my own um, dissertation, my research was with mindfulness and I was really being called to um, develop that and become a teacher in mindfulness too. But my, my research in my PhD was with mindfulness and um, actually to introduce mindfulness as a self-care practice for students in the veterinary medicine. And so now I'm here with horses. Since this is your first time working with horses, what has that been like? Uh, Eye-opening. They really are helpful in like you being aware of yourself. Um, they, they bring in that the mirror that Sarah was talking about. The first day that I came here, we were not doing the training yet. I was just like getting acquainted with the horse and figuring out what, what that looks like for me. And I, I remember feeling like my nervous system a little bit more agitated and I could notice the horse a little bit more agitated. So, and I asked Sarah like, Am I the one agitated or is the horse agitated? Like, I, I couldn't immediately place and then um, I started like calming myself down and that would calm the horse too. So it, it was an interesting experience to see how, how much of a mirror they are. Have you learned anything new about mindfulness while doing this? I don't know that I learned something new about mindfulness. I just I feel like it just reinforced my my belief in mindfulness as a practice and how helpful it can be. Um, and it's it's fun to bring into other uh, realms, right? To to be able to practice with a horse and, and have that kind of relationship as well. Is there anything else you would like us to know? The curriculum was developed by Bill and he developed it for veterans, right? To help veterans learn mindfulness. But we are not um, limited to doing our research just with veterans. We want to expand to other populations and see if it can be helpful for other populations as well. Why did you decide to take equine mindfulness yeah, so I am actually a research intern here at ESU, so I'm doing a lot of research work with some of the other adaptive horsemanship programs here, and they were looking for volunteers to join this program. I was free on Tuesday afternoon, so I figured why not, it might be fun. Well, I'm an animal science major, and I don't have like any experience with equine before this class, so I thought it'd be a good way, like two birds with one stone, to also kind of be mindful and also kind of get that horse experience and combining the two is super interesting. Um, I feel like working outside of a, a clinical setting is more helpful for generalizing like the practice itself so you actually get to apply um, what we're learning in something that requires more brain power than just only focusing on the one thing. Um, my background's in, I majored in psychology, um, and so mindfulness has always been interesting to me in how the brain works, but then also applying it into real world situations. Um, and then I've minored with um, equine assisted services, so learning about working with horses and how that can then benefit the rest of people's lives as well has really been a passion of mine. What has this course been like for you? It's been a little different than what I expected, but it's been a good different. I didn't expect quite as much focus on like the mindfulness side, but it has been good. I've learned a lot. It's been pretty, it's been great. I always enjoy these days, I always feel, um, leave feeling super great and super proud of just what we've done with the horses and then super proud of myself for, you know, being able to do the, the activities with the horses. 
Um, it's been really rewarding actually. Um, I've noticed actually that a lot of that generalization in my life of being able to apply it to my family with my spouse and my daughter and being like, oh, this principle works here. And then being able to, I guess, expand on that. What have you learned that you've applied in other parts of your life? I've learned like how to redirect my mind instead of criticizing myself, be like, okay, that's, that's okay. Let's step back and try again. And I've like learned that sometimes it's okay to pause and check in and just see how I'm feeling in the moment. Yeah, definitely just those feelings of doubt or like, what am I doing wrong? Because if the horses don't know what you're doing or if you're feeling nervous, they're feeling nervous. So you're just super aware of your emotions. Like when my horse turns the other way or does something wrong, I have to think, okay, what am I doing? How am I feeling? Like, what could I do better versus um, blaming them and then when I'm out, like at my job and stuff, I also kind of am like, okay, that didn't go as planned. How can I fix it? What, what am I feeling? Like, just being mindful about my actions and how I can change them. Last week, we learned about psychological resistance and being really self-critical of yourself in a situation and kind of building on yourself, uh, beating up on yourself. But then with psychological re resistance, if you're aware of it, you can step back and kind of just observe what's going on. And rather than self-criticizing yourself and going down that storyline, you can just observe it, acknowledge it, and then still be present in the moment rather than spiraling into like some negative emotion. So when you're working with a horse and you don't know a lot about them, there's a lot that you can get wrong and they can mirror your emotions. So if you are being negative, then they might act up a little bit. Um, and then at home, I mean, there's always a lot of pressure um, between trying to do things right, especially with, I have a little two-year-old. And so being like, oh no, I'm just like a screw up as a mom. It's like, well, you're not. And then actually seeing what the realistic situation is like. And so then being able to apply it to that, it's like, oh, okay, it's just like when I was working with Mona, I need to be present and not worry about if I'm making a mistake because it's all trial and error with the horse. I don't get upset with the horse, so I don't need to get upset with my daughter because she's still learning. Tell us about this course and why it was started. Yeah, so... This course is called Whispers with Horses, and it is an equine-assisted learning activity that combines mindfulness practice with working with horses. And the reason why this melding of mindfulness and working with horses works so well is because horses are mirrors to the people. They will react to our body language, our emotions, and then it helps people learn how to react to the horse and their emotions and everything as well. So um, it works really well in that sense. We started this project um, this summer to do a pilot run of Whispers with Horses. Whispers with Horses was created by Dr. Bill Marchand in the Salt Lake City Veterans Affairs Office, and it's been duplicated in multiple sites across the United States. And so we have decided to start working with that project as well and incorporating mindfulness into our equine assisted learning activities. And our hope is that we're going to be able to do more of these events and sessions and eventually get some research pushed out on the efficacy of utilizing horses in mindfulness practice. What do you expect the students to get out of this course? We really expect the students and the participants to get a broader sense of what it means to be mindful as well as how to incorporate mindfulness practice into their daily lives. And one great thing about practicing mindfulness concepts with a horse is it forces you to practice it while doing something. So while sitting and being mindful is really good, sometimes when we start doing something, we forget to stay checked in with ourselves. And horses don't allow us to forget because we gotta check in. What am I doing? What am I communicating to my horse? Who can benefit from participating in the course? Any, I believe anybody who's a human could benefit from this because we all need to work on mindfulness. And those who already know about horses can still benefit from this because 
just because you've worked with a horse before you've ridden you've led a horse doesn't mean you've done it in a way that promotes mindfulness and focus and so this course really helps identify how we can do that working through strong emotions creating self-compassion and then adding that in with the horse it was so quiet during the course is it normally like that Usually with this Whispers with Horses, there are times where I'll be giving some instruction and it gets a little bit louder, but because we're really focused on that therapeutic environment and keeping a calm, mindful space and a really safe space for the clients to practice their skills, make mistakes, and it's all good, um, we really like keeping it in that quiet stage. Now, if you come into our arena during academic classes, there's a lot more hustle and bustle going on. How does mindfulness training with horses affect the horses? It is something that as an industry, we're still discovering. So there's been some research done to see the effects of doing programs like this on the horse and determining, does it cause them stress? Does it, is it kind of a neutral activity or is it a positive activity? Most studies have focused on determining if it's stressful or not. And there's been mixed results with most results pointing towards it's not overly stressful for the horses. Definitely not any more stressful than any other activity we would do with horses. But I am working on a different project right now where we're developing a way to determine if the horse is having a negative, neutral, or positive experience within this kind of activity and environment. Environment. So hopefully in the next year or two, I have a really good answer that they enjoy it. Because anecdotally, I think the horses enjoy it. They're relaxed, they're engaged, they come meet us at the gate, they all want to be part of what we're doing. And overall, just a very relaxed, calm demeanor, which shows that they probably do also get something out of this experience. Is there anything else you would like us to know? The other thing is just equine assisted learning always incorporates some sort of educator as well as somebody who understands the horse. So that can be the same person or it could be two different people. So I'm the equine specialist and my colleague Joe is the mindfulness professional.